Tonight's presentation contains vampires, doctors, good twins, bad twins, all played by George Zuko. Viewer discretion is advised. Greetings and salutations. I'm Justy Ghost, the itch on your little toe, and welcome to Shocking Theater, the only locally produced horror host program in the northwestern part of the monster mitten known as Michigan. Oh, and I'm also the host of Shocking Theater. With me, as always, are my faithful assistants, Jinx Ghost Raven and Igor. Where's Igor? Igor! Igor! Where are you, Igor? Come out, come out, wherever you are! Huh. Mm, must still be monster hunting. Oh well. Now, I know that the last few weeks we have shown a Sherlock Holmes movie, a re-edit of one of the worst films ever made, an episode where some Yahoo wouldn't stop changing the channel, and a science fiction film. We haven't been living up to our horror host names around here, but tonight, that changes. We actually have a horror movie for you. Okay, it's a PRC release starring George Zuko, but it has a man rising from a grave, so it might actually scare someone. I hope. It's entitled Dead Men Walk, and we hope you enjoy it here on Shocking Theater. Creatures of the light, how can you say with absolute certainty what does or does not dwell within the limitless ocean of the night? Are the dark and shrouded legions of evil not but figments of the imagination because you and your puny conceit say they cannot exist? Whence came the story told in frightened whispers down through the ages of witch and warlock? Werewolf and vampire, and all the spawn of hell, born on the sable wings of night to the unholy communion of the witch's Sabbath.
forth his hand and we consign this soul to infinite mercy. If there are any who care to look upon the face of the departed before he is carried to his final resting place, you may do so now. How can you defile this sacred house with the body of that evil man, that servant of the devil? His hands are stained with the blood of the innocent, and his unspeakable sorcery. Please, please, you can't create a disturbance here. Clayton, I'm terribly sorry. Poor old Kate hasn't been quite right since the shocking murder of her little granddaughter last year. But I never dreamed... I that... understand. Why don't you please go on with the service? Dust to dust, and may his soul find a mercy. Isn't that all for the best, Uncle Lloyd? After all, he caused you nothing but unhappiness. He was my brother. Yet he always seemed an alien soul, even in childhood. I believe he hated me all his life. After he returned from India, Elwin was like a man obsessed by a demon. Nothing was sacred to him. He had nothing but contempt for all the decent men hold dear. His mind became a black and evil thing probing into the perverted knowledge of ancient sorcery and demonology. Must have been insane. We're all quick to call insane any mentality that deviates from the conventional. There have been many things in heaven and earth undreamed of in our philosophy. Oh, David, you take Gail home. I'm going to Elvin's house. Well, you're sure you won't leave me, Dr. Clayton? Yes, quite sure. Now run along, dear. I'll be home very soon. All right, Uncle Lloyd. Come on, David. you're doing. Where you burn yourself. Your brother searched the earth to find those books, and you dare destroy them. The earth will be a cleaner place without them. The fools who enforce the law believe his death was an accident. But I know you murdered him. You threw him from the top of the cliff. I thought only to save my own life. He brought his death upon himself. You lie. You followed him there to murder him. You couldn't get anyone to believe that. What do I care what they believe? 
You'll pray for death long before you die. Darling, you've made me very happy. No happier than you've made me. And now, don't you think we'd better tell Uncle Lord? After all, he is my guardian. Of course, although I don't think he'll be very much surprised. Has the moon lost its appeal? Why, not at all, sir. I... Well, that is, we... Uh, what I'm trying to say is that... Could you possibly be trying to tell me that you and Gail are in love? That's it, exactly, sir. I hope we have your approval. Yes, David. I know her happiness will be safe in your hands. I'll do my best, sir. I believe you. I can face the future with a lighter heart. You speak as if you were in danger. No, not at all, dear. It just makes me feel happy to know that your future's assured, that's all. Shaitan. Dark Lord of the Abyss. I live. I am not yet strong. But the power has been given me to draw everlasting life from the veins of the living. They will give me the blood from their hearts. with me only during the hours of darkness. From dawn to dusk, 
I lie helpless in the grave. What do you make of it, Dr. Clayton? I don't know. She was in perfect health a week ago, now she's dead. Do you think it was murder? I don't know what to say. There's not a wound on the body except the two tiny puncture marks in the throat. But the appearance of the body would indicate that she bled to death. I could tell you why she died. You wouldn't believe me. Kate, if you go snooping around, I'll have to send you away. Oh, please, don't do that. I don't mean any harm. You're a good man, Dr. Clayton. Everyone knows the goodness of your heart. But your brother Elwin brought terrible evil upon us. He's dead, Kate. And all evil died with him. But it didn't die. It's growing stronger every day. That's enough. You'd better leave. Supposed by rights, I should send her to an institution. Oh, that would be needless cruelty. She's perfectly harmless. I'll take your word for it. I think I should order an autopsy. This may be murder. I doubt if you'd learn much from an autopsy. The bloodless condition of the body wasn't caused by any known poison. Igor's still not back yet, and he promised he'd be back in time for the movie. Ah well, I guess I'll just continue on without him. As you can tell, we have a Poverty Row vampire-like movie for you with both the good guy and the bad guy, played by the great George Zuko. Not really much more to say about this film, other than it's from 1943. Sometimes it's kind of hard to find stuff online to talk about with some of these Poverty Row films as they were generally done quick, cheap, and without a lot of paperwork remaining. And we had more to do in the script, you know, some stuff with Igor becoming a vampire, and both him and I fighting to the death, and then the earth would explode so I would have a chance to use this clip. Now let us return to Dead Men Walk, here. Igor, you're finally back. How'd the hunt go? I am not Igor, sir. I am his evil doppelganger. If 
you're Igor's evil doppelganger. Where is Igor? He has been imprisoned by my master, sir. Who is your master, and why did he capture Igor? I was created by the mad scientist that your assistant was hunting, and he was getting far too close. I was created in his place so you would not notice that he was gone. Why are you telling me this? Because it's only proper, sir. Well, that's what Igor would do, I guess. Well, let's just get back to Dead Men Walk, here on Shocking Theater. You planned the book that would have given you the information you want. Heroin. Did I startle you? I'm so sorry. But you can't be standing there. You're dead. No, I'm not dead. I have life far beyond anything you can understand. That doesn't make you any of the less guilty of murder. You took it upon yourself to sit in judgment of me and destroy my mortal span of life. Am I losing my mind? There was no sign of life in Elwyn's body when it was placed in the vault. You'll know that I'm no intangible figment of your imagination when you feel the weight of my hatred. Your life will be a torment. I'll strip you of everything you hold dear before I drag you down to a sordid death. Young love in the moonlight. The theme of so many poetic rhapsodies. Gail was an easy hypnotic subject, and I would have made her my disciple. And to save her from being initiated into the dark mysteries, the eminently respectable Dr. Clayton stooped to murder. Yes. Your life, a menace to all this clean and decent, had no right to exist. That you failed. <laughs> By the power of those I serve, my life is indestructible. Eternally sustained by the life I take from others. I'll take life from Gail. Slowly. You will see her life ebb day by day and be powerless to save her. Man or devil, I don't know what you are, but... About there, I, I thought I saw a burglar, that's all. Oh, you nearly frightened me to death. I'm sorry I frightened you. It was nothing but a shadow. Now it's very late. Haven't you better go to bed? All right. Good night, dear. Good night, Uncle Lloyd. Good night, David. It's a long time to wait, but I'll see you in the morning. Oh. An ambitious young doctor shouldn't waste his valuable time picking up pretty speeches. Good night. Good night.
Forgive me, Dr. Clayton, if I seem to be impertinent. But have you told all the truth about that shooting? No. I have reason to doubt my own sanity. Why do you say that? I saw my brother Elwyn here as plainly as I see you and talk to him. If it was no insane hallucination, it's too terrible to think about. Oh, don't worry about it. You've been under a great strain lately, and you know what kind of tricks our nerves play on us sometimes. Yes, that's my only hope. If you'd let me take over most of the burden of your practice for a while, I'm sure you'd be all right in no time. Thank you, David. The final outcome will be the same. In a short time now, they will call you dead. Then you will awaken and be as I am now. You will serve and obey me forever. Is she any better today? I'm desperately worried about her. In spite of everything I can do, she grows steadily weaker. Haven't you discovered the cause yet? As you can see, she has all the symptoms of acute anemia. And I'm treating her for that. But I can't find a single case in medical history that it developed so quickly. There must be something that can be done. Can't just let her die. Cause you and Uncle Lloyd so much worry. Now don't you fret about it. We're going to have you up and about in just no time at all. I know you will. Isn't it lovely out here in the sunshine? It looks so different at night. I have such awful nightmares. I dread falling asleep. Why? What do you dream about? I dream of a horrible bat-like creature hovering over me. I try to struggle, but I can't move a muscle. Then it seems to swoop down and suffocate me. Where did you get those marks on your neck? Uh, an insect bite, I guess. I was rather unsightly, so I've been wearing the scarf. When did that happen? I don't know. I just happened to discover the marks the other morning when I was looking in the mirror. Are they painful? No. In fact, there's no sensation in that particular spot at all. Hmm. That's not. Dr. Clayton, 
Uh, don't you think Gail should have a blood transfusion immediately? Yes, I've been thinking about that. I'll advertise for a donor. I'd like to do it, if my blood's the right type. Good, I'll make a test. There's more cuddle in her face already. How do you feel, darling? Ever so much better. I don't think we have any more to worry about. got a date for a wedding. I won't forget. Dr. Clayton, is anything troubling you? I saw a face outside Gail's window. Well, that's absurd. Gail's window's on the second. I know it sounds fantastic. But I'm convinced that Elvin is responsible in some way for some intangible menace threatening us all. Well, that's impossible. Elvin's dead. I know it's impossible according to all normal laws of nature, but can we be sure there are no supernatural laws beyond our understanding? We've been watching Gail grow steadily weaker and weaker sinking every day. And medical science could offer no explanation. Dr. Clayton, even though some things may be unknown to medical science, I'd hardly look to superstition for the explanation. Don't ask me to believe that Elwin's threatening Gale's life. The dead have no power over the living. I don't know what I believe myself. One reads of so many things for which there seems to be no natural explanation. Will you come with me to the vault where Elwin is buried? Why go there? Because if there is such a thing as a vampire existence after death, the state of the body will show the proof and it can be destroyed. Well, that's ridiculous. I feel like a fool or worse. Prowling around dead bodies on such an errand. Can you afford to be squeamish? That girl's life may be in danger. All right, I'll go with you. If what I fear is true, there's no time to lose. stolen by medical students. I'm afraid that's not the answer. Elwin dedicated his entire life to the dark powers of evil. What unholy forces he set in motion. Dr. Clay, ignorant people believe that sort of thing in medieval times, but not anymore. I know there's a natural cause for every effect, and I don't believe Gail's life is being threatened by any supernatural power from beyond the grave. Perhaps you're right, I don't know. Dr. Clayton, I'd like to marry Gail immediately and take her away. I think a change of climate might be beneficial. I don't know whether that would be advisable or not. I'll think it over. Unless you do something right away, I'm afraid Gail's going to be murdered. Well, who do you suspect of trying to murder her? Dr. Clayton. Oh, that's impossible. 
Why, well, Dr. Clayton's one of the finest men I ever knew. That's what I used to believe. But I've been forced to change my opinion. He's either losing his mind or he's attempting to divert suspicion from himself with some fantastic story of supernatural vengeance from beyond the grave. But why should he want to kill her? She has considerable money, which he would inherit if she died unmarried. Well, Dr. Clayton wouldn't want her money. He has plenty of his own. Besides, that's a very serious charge to make, merely on suspicion. What if it is? I'm watching her die, and something's got to be done. The other night, I insisted that he give her a blood transfusion, and immediately her condition improved. I myself could see how she became stronger. The next morning, she was weaker than ever. Well, there isn't a thing I can do unless you give me some definite proof of criminal intent. After Gale is dead, you may be able to charge him with murder. That will be a great comfort to me. Martin is one of the nicest boys in our town. He's one of the cleanest boys, too. Billy always has been a nice boy. But he hasn't always been so clean. As a matter of fact, for a long time, Billy's parents worried about him. They didn't worry just because Billy got dirt on his hands and face. They knew that a boy is bound to get dirty when he's playing cowboy and runs into a bandit down by the corral. Billy's parents did worry because he was so careless about washing when he should have washed. He had to be reminded almost every time. And even then, he didn't do a very good job. The trouble was, Billy had the wrong idea about being clean. Wash, wash, wash. They just want me to be a sissy. But then, one night, Billy had a dream. At least, I guess it was a dream. I bet cowboys don't wash all the time. But you're wrong, Billy. It's not sissy to be clean. Who said that? Who's there? I did. One of your best friends. Let me introduce myself. Soapy's the name, partner. Why, you're a living cake of soap. Big as life, Billy. And I'm here to help you. I can help you, partner. But I don't quite understand. That's just the trouble. So many boys and girls don't understand what a good friend I can be. So I'd like to show you. May I? Why, yes, I do. Well then, just lie down and close your eyes. That's right. Now, what do you see? Why, I see a cowboy. He's washing up. That's right. There's nothing sissy about that cowboy, is there? He's a bronco buster. He rides wild horses.
Well, Billy, you and I must tame animals more dangerous than bucking broncos. I help you control animals that could make you sick. Now, close your eyes again, and I'll show you. The animals I help you control are called disease germs. They are so tiny you can't see them, except with a microscope, like this man is using. Disease germs are dangerous because they make you sick if too many of them get inside of you. And they can be on almost anything that children touch or handle. Even on things that look clean. If you get disease germs on your hands and then put your hands in your eyes or in your mouth, those disease germs can get inside of you. But you and I can kill most of the germs on your hands so they can't make you sick if we work as partners. So be a germ fighter with me. Learn good hand habits. Boys and girls should wash their hands often especially at certain times. Wash your hands before doing anything that has to do with food. Before handling food in the kitchen. Before setting the table. Before eating at any time. And always remember to wash your hands before brushing your teeth. Wash your hands after doing anything that gets them very dirty. After playing games. After playing with animals. and especially after going to the toilet. You and I can be partners in other clean habits, Billy. We can do a fine job together, each time you bathe all over. And of course, you should take a bath or shower each time you've been working or playing hard, not just on Saturday nights. You should wash your hair often Boys can do it easily, each time they take a bath or shower. Girls should wash their hair at least once every two weeks. You can see, Billy, that I am your partner, but you have other health friends. Every community has a health department, just as it has a fire department and a police department. And one of your best friends is the health officer. He's a germ fighter, too. Health officers fight germs in many ways. They know how to look for germs. This health officer is testing a drinking glass from your school cafeteria. And now a health officer checks the cafeteria windows to be sure that flies can't get in. Flies carry dangerous germs on their feet. Health laws say that food must be clean. Health officers must see that cows are clean and healthy, so their milk will not have germs. Another health officer, the meat inspector, makes sure that meat is clean and safe. The mark shows that this meat is clean. But health officers can't do everything for you. You must be your own health officer, Billy. Since germs can get inside of you, through your mouth, be sure that food is clean before you eat it. Be sure that dishes are clean before you use them for food. Never take a bite from someone else's food. That's right. Break off the piece to share your cookie. And keep food covered, 
safe from flies when you eat outside. Remember, flies carry dangerous germs on their feet. When you drink from a glass, be sure that it is clean. It's a good idea to have your own drinking glass. When you drink at a fountain, keep your mouth away from the nozzle. And there's one more important thing, Billy. Your clothes. You know, a cowboy wears working clothes when he's out on the range because he gets dusty and dirty. But when he's ready to go into town, after I've helped him wash up, he puts on his clean clothes. Children get dusty and dirty when they play games. You should wear old clothes when you play. But when you're through playing, when you clean up for dinner, you should change to clean clothes. You see, Billy, being clean in every way is an important part of being healthy. And being healthy is an important part of being happy. I see that now, Soapy. You are a good friend and partner. That's right. Well, so long. So long, partner, and don't forget. I won't, Soapy. And Billy didn't forget. He's one of the cleanest boys in our town now. He's one of the healthiest. And certainly, he's one of the happiest. what was happening to you, and I had to come here. I'm the only one who can save you. I appreciate your interest, but Uncle Lord's doing everything possible. I know you don't believe me. You think I'm crazy. Everyone does. But I know more about some things than you'll find in all the doctor books in this room. You wear that scarf to hide the marks on your throat. I know what made them. I know what steals the life from you at night. And I also know what will save you. There's no use for me to talk to Dr. Clayton or no one else. They wouldn't believe me. The sheriff said he'd send me away if I made a nuisance of myself. Oh, don't worry about that. I can help you if you let me. Here. Wear this. Wear it around your neck always. Never take it off. I naturally hold the cross in reverence. But how can wearing it be of any greater help? Because they haven't the power to touch a sacred symbol. Hey, who do you mean? Vampires, creatures of the devil who are neither alive nor dead. During the day, they sleep in their graves in death-like sleep. But at night, they have the power to roam the earth. Oh, I didn't mean no harm, Dr. Clayton. Don't be afraid. I know you didn't mean any harm. It's frightened and good for our patient. I didn't mean to get her excited. I was just anxious to help her, that's all. I understand that, but I, I think you'd better go. The vampire is your brother, Elwin. Take his body from the vault and destroy it with fire. That's the only way you can put an end to his evil power. The body isn't there. Someone has removed it. You must find where it is. Nothing can destroy his power at night, but his sorcery cannot protect him during the day. I'll do all I can to help you find him. Do you believe what she said? Is that why I have the 
those horrible nightmares? I don't know, dear. It seems utterly impossible, and yet it's the only answer to an impossible condition. I'd been convinced of some malignant powers at work, but I didn't want to frighten you with that, and I couldn't even believe the evidence of my own eyes. Do as she said. Wear this, my dear. It's the symbol of a power that delivers from all evil. And we need divine help. stand this any longer. We've got to have a showdown. I think you're killing Gail. How can I be doing that? I don't know what devilish means you're using. But if she dies, I'll kill you. I've done everything in my power to save her. Don't expect me to believe that. Anyone with the slightest medical knowledge can see that she's not suffering from any normal disease. Her vitality is being systematically destroyed. That's true. I don't know how I can make you believe what my own common sense calls impossible. Her life is threatened by some abnormal creature that has no right to exist. That abnormal creature is human, not a ghost returning from the grave. If I could possibly do so, I'd take her away from here. But the law protects you. All I can do is hold you responsible for her life. If she dies, so are you. I don't blame you for suspecting me. I don't blame you for thinking possibly that I'm a homicidal maniac. But the truth is even more unbelievable. I honestly believe that she's better off here than if you took her away. But why don't you stay and watch over her? I'd be glad to have your help. I'm sorry if I've done you an injustice. But I've been so worried about Gail, I've nearly lost my mind. I understand, and I sympathize with you with all my heart. Let's go up and see how she is. I'm going to sit here beside you for a while. It'll be nice to know that you're near me, even when I'm asleep. I believe you won't be troubled with any more nightmares. Good night, dear. Good night, Uncle Lloyd. When they're all asleep, break into the house and get the chain from around her neck, Zola. You can do it, I can't. I will do as you say, Master.
What do you want with me? I didn't do anything. Be quiet or I'll break your neck. What do you know about this? That's Elwin Sepp. What's he doing here? It looked as if he were trying to strangle Gail. I wasn't going to hurt her. What were you doing in the room? Elwin sent him for some purpose. You're the one who removed Elwin's body from the vault. Where did you hide it? I don't know what you're talking about. Elwin is dead. What's He's all... neither dead nor alive. He's a vampire. And Gail will never be out of danger until his body is in ashes. What is this talk about vampires? I know you don't believe him, but I can't let that stand in my way now. I'll hesitate at nothing to make you talk. Where does he lie hidden during the day? You'll never know. No, you know, and I want to know what you're doing in this house. There he goes. What chance have you against me? I have powers at my command far beyond your wildest dream. Your life is forfeit any time I care to take it. Now you know what we're up against. What can we do against a creature like that? Despite what he said, he can be destroyed. In the meantime, you guard Gale. Don't leave her alone for a minute. Yes, sir. You failed. I couldn't help it. He woke up. I'll try again. That opportunity is gone. I'll be on that guard now. Let's try something else. Good evening, Doctor. Young Bentley made some wild talk before church this morning. Yes, he was half out of his mind with worry. He came here to accuse me of trying to murder Gail. Yes, that was it. But you don't believe that? No. But others heard. And gossip has gone all around. And considerable feeling has been stirred up. And there's no telling what some irresponsible hothead might do. Sorry to have people feel that way about me, but I don't see what I can do about it. Well, I suggest that you go away for a while. They'll soon cool down and come to their senses. But I can't leave. I have work here that must be done.
This is where you lie hidden during the day. The color in your face proving you are a vampire. And not one of the honest dead who rest in peace. Dr. Clayton will believe me when he sees you. And fire will destroy your evil power. I hope you're enjoying tonight's movie, and you enjoyed our brief intermission with that creepy bar of soap. He is worse than Pedal Bear, sir. He is at that, Igor's doppelganger. Now, before we continue on with this break, I just want to give a bit of a shout out to Lord Victor Von Scary of Fright Night Cinema from the lower part of the thumb of the Monster Mitten. Check out Friday Night Fright Night. Dot com for Fright Night Cinema and see what goes on downstate. I do believe that we should get back to the show now, sir. Of course, Igor's doppelganger. So, what's it like being an evil doppelganger? It is not that bad, sir. It is rather odd, though, having the same personality as the original, but having the urge to do evil. What do you mean, do evil? Mm, for instance, right now, I desire to take over the show and show the unedited version of Manos the Hands of Fate instead. So, why aren't you? Because no man is that evil, sir. Phew. I was worried you would show it after we just showed it a couple of weeks ago. I did say unedited, sir. I would leave the bad dubbing and the boring bits in. Whoa. That is evil. Not even the master of all evil. Insert your least favorite politician here. Would do something that bad. I do believe that we should get back to the movie now, sir. Of course, Igor Stoppelganger. Let us return to Dead Men Walk, here on Shocking Theater. Maybe we don't like the way you're not doing anything. I'm doing everything possible. There's not the slightest proof of murder against anyone. And I'll throw you in jail for inciting mob violence if you don't keep quiet. Thanks, here! Here! Thank Miss Grace! Oh, old Kate has been, been, been murdered. Murdered? Yes. Where did this happen? Uh, in that old abandoned cemetery. I heard her scream, but by the time I got there, she's dead. Her, her neck was broken. Did you see anyone? No, and I didn't hang around looking for anyone. I ain't lost no crazy murderers. Oh, Kate never harmed a soul in her life. Her death is proof enough that there's a crazy killer roaming around here. Yeah, 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 yeah. him is my business. I'll not stand for any mob taking matters in their own hands. That's final. Take me to where the body is. Hmm? Yes, sir. We better do something pretty quick. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
first year. Old Kate found you and I had to kill her. I knew they'd search the cemetery, so I brought you here. You will be well rewarded for your faithful service, of love. Make a secret crypt for me here, where I can remain undisturbed. Everything will be as you say. O oh, mighty Lord of the Abyss, your servant bows in eternal obedience to your will. Time has come when I must destroy all those who stand in our way. Finding this place cost Kate her life and did no good. If I'd only known in time. another murder. I saw him as plain as I see you and he glared at me like a devil. You get on the phone and rouse some of the folks. We we'll stop this right now. Well, she's all right. I look in every few minutes. Did you find the hiding place? Yes, but I was too late. The coffin had been removed. 
I don't know why I didn't think to search the old cemetery before. Before Kate sacrificed her life. We stood around long enough waiting for the sheriff to do something. Hey, no, get up. Gail's all right. She's sleeping like a baby. What's her next move? I don't know. We must find that coffin. I don't know where to search. Why don't we just try and think of all the logical places? Elwin's house. Might have been taken there. That's worth trying. Dr. Clayton. You stay here with Gail. Let me go. No. I told you before, I feel that I must be the one to destroy him. We were brothers, and there was a bond of hatred between us that lasted a lifetime. If I fail, then you must be the one to take up the fight. For Gail's sake and for the sake of mankind. around the house. The rest come with me. Where's Doc Clayton? He's not here. Where is he? What do you want with him? We're going to stop him from committing any more crazy murders. Dr. Clayton is innocent. Well, you said yourself he was trying to murder Gail. I was wrong. Please believe me, terribly wrong. No, you weren't. You were right. I saw the proof tonight with my own eyes, and I caught him red-handed. That couldn't have been Dr. Clayton. It was his brother, Elwin. Have you gone crazy? Elwin Clayton is dead. Everyone knows that. You don't understand. I me. don't understand why you're trying to protect him. All right, men, go ahead and search the house. Come on, you. Wilkins, you Get stupid fool. Go ahead with the search, man. I'm telling you the truth when I say that Elwin's responsible for those murders. I'm beginning to believe that you're just as crazy and dangerous as Doc Clayton. sometime. We 
don't you? Look at this. A book on witchcraft and vampires. No one in his right mind would read this sort of trash. It'll soon be daylight. I suppose he just went out for an evening stroll, huh? You wouldn't understand. I understand about murder and I know what to do about it. with you to your death. Kaya will become a vampire, a slave to my will forever. In 
enjoy the movie, Igor's Doppelganger? Not really, sir. I rather do not enjoy horror movies, sir. Really? What kind of movies are your favorites? I prefer the pop culture comedies that have a shelf life of only a couple of weeks, sir. Really? N no, not really. Those movies are even worse than Manos. They were made by... Studio Executives. And those guys make the master of all evil. Once again, please insert your least favorite politician here. Look like a saint. Why don't you close us out, Igor's doppelganger? Of course, sir. Please join us again next week for Night Fright starring John Agar. Until then, I bid you a good fright and pleasant screams.